I'm Angelina, that's Heather, and we're here to find out if these hacks from TikTok are stupid brilliant. Or just stupid. First clip. <laughs> That is okay. That's one way to do it. If uh, it looks like he's got a puller, but like he doesn't have the right jaws, maybe as long as it gets done. Yeah, I mean, with enough ratchet straps, you can achieve anything. Your so, dreams can you know, come true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like our buddy here has a puller, which you would need to pull off a uh, harmonic balancer. There's a couple of different designs that you can mm. use. It looks like he has the kind that uses the jaws that go around, but maybe he doesn't have the correct jaws because this is a larger puller to go around and grab what he needs. So instead, he's got some ratchet straps bound many times to the puller uh, to, to make this happen. So um, for those of you who've never used a puller before, it has a piece that has a threaded hole down the middle there and you would have jaws attached that are holding on to whatever it is that you're pulling off, in this case a harmonic balancer, and you have a long bolt that goes down the center that he's using an impact to tighten and that bolt as he's tightening is extending toward the engine side and then those jaws, as that bolt extends, is gonna pull that harmonic balancer off. Uh, I mean, it's not gonna damage the puller and he's getting it done. So whatever gets it done, I'm, I'm game for. I'm just impressed by like how much he's wrapped these straps on there. <laughs> yeah. Like, cause there's still original like puller stuff on there. You can see that he's got it wrapped around something. Yeah, we But he's got that, he's here. got that on lock. Damn, dude, yeah, look, yeah, he's look got at it that. on there. He does, he sure does. Good work, sir, good work. Give me that next clip. You ever have a yeah. bug when you're trying to put springs in your car? Oh, oh that's kind of So you got a spring compressor. Let's go, oh God. Put the spring compressor on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It won't fit because the spring compressor is <laughs> 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 So you want to compress it, oh. then add zip ties, keep them in the middle so they're easy to access, um. and then remove the spring compressor carefully. That's how much shorter it makes the spring. And then you want to take your angry little Lance. ball of zip ties and potential energy and just slot it yeah, in. Yeah, you know, just not like potential then energy. Then the spring right? in situ, you just go to town with the wire cutters. That's one that's way to do it. For what he's doing, it's like, yeah, that's quick, you know, because normally I would just kind of take it that off and then... Or, right, or you whatever. disconnect you, the control arm or something. You disconnect whatever yeah. you need to to just get it in there and then, you know, you get a jack, put it underneath, get it to line up and crush yeah. that spring in. All right guys, hi, I'm Heber. I'm the mechanic here at Donut. I work on all the cars here. Everything gets fixed by me most of the time. Also, things break here all the time, so you know, <laughs> job security is great. <laughs> this looks like it works, you know, it's just a little dangerous. And if that potential energy becomes kinetic, that will launch in your face. <laughs> Super dangerous. You're really putting a lot of trust in those zip ties for sure. Buy the expensive ones. I swear, <laughs> if you're going to the 99 cent store for zip ties to do something like this, you gonna see God. <laughs> Let's take a look at that next clip. Ingenious trick to detect vacuum air leaks in engines. <laughs> Engine's gonna smoke the cigarette. Does he have a vacuum pump attached oh. to that? Okay, so then just all right, there you go. Okay, you know, there's one way to do that. Yeah, if you vape instead, you could just <laughs> take a huge hit and then, and that'll work too, maybe. Is that what all the Subaru owners do? I think that. I think that it's better be if you vape for the car. It's better for the car's lungs, right? Yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, we want to take care of those lungs. Yeah, take care of your car's lungs. Vape the instead car. of putting a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> what would be the proper way to do this, ever? So normally, uh, when you're doing, uh, like, you're te testing for air leaks, uh, you have a specific tool that you use to, like, a smoke machine that you, right. you seal it with, and then you pump smoke into the system and you know enough smoke will go in and it'll show you where these leaks are hiding from and he's basically doing the same thing here by you know having this air system feed the cigarette in and that's pulling all the smoke in and it'll leak out so he's just doing it way cheaper yeah they make cheap smoke machines now, yeah they do, they they do. They like do. they really come down in price and they're small it's just what you need just vape
Today's sponsor, Nissan, invited us and Astro to check out the all new Nissan Kicks. But we don't want to give it back. So we're getting out of the city so we can enjoy the great outdoors. I'm driving this time. And I'll find us a swimming hole. The 2025 Kicks is great for road trips and day trips. It has tons of room for all your gear or friends, and it comes with standard safety shield 360 technologies to help keep everyone and everything safe. Plus, as the first Kicks with intelligent all-wheel drive, it can easily drive in rain, snow, or shine. With intelligent around view monitor, you get a bird's eye view so you don't hit stuff. Please return the kicks immediately. We really, really, really need the car back ASAP. <laughs> nah, I'm going swimming. All right. Yeah, if you're go. looking for a comfortable yeah. road trip car to get both around and out of the city, then check out the all new Nissan Kicks. To learn more, click the link below. Target acquired. Let's go on to that next clip. Or vaping. <laughs> oh yeah, I've seen this. Hey. One. There you go. That's one way to do it. Yeah, I saw this. This was genius. Yeah, that honestly. I mean, they do make hand pumps for that, but if you've got a spare power steering pump, and you can hear it like, ee, so it's probably going bad, that's why they had it around the shop. <laughs> you probably always got a spare something in your house, yeah, right? Yeah, so, so a power steering pump, basically the way it works is there is a little pump that is spun by the accessory belt that as it spins, it kind of pulls fluid, squeezing it in like a smaller space, and then like once it gets to an area, it's pushing it out. And it's doing that at such a fast speed that uh, it's pushing that fluid slowly and slowly and slowly. As you can see, that's what they're using here. As they're spinning it, it's grabbing that fluid and pushing it into the transmission. So they're doing this to load up their transmission with fluid. You can normally do this with a hand pump. I have a hand pump at home. But if we're being completely honest, it's way more tedious to be doing this. Like, <laughs> and then when the line pops off. And the like, line pops ah. out and it falls out and you're like, God, so at least with this, you know, it's you got fast. like that and you're just like, shh, yeah, real easy. For sure. I mean, it, it would be nice if they just gave better fill points for oh, yeah, uh, yeah. transmissions, but. If, you know, engineers could just, you know, step their game up. Uh, <laughs> could help us we out a little bit, shoot. please. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at that next clip. Did you know? Oh yeah, I love this trick. I love this trick. You know this trick? Very handy. Never seen this trick in my life. Very handy. Oh, it's just like really just, it feels good to watch. It's very... Imagine uh, I lose this track of where you finished the... Oh God. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit interesting that the loom wasn't cut maybe beforehand. I get it, he's trying to like get it to fit right. I definitely would have like something to mark it real quick. And that's what I, well, that's what I'll usually do. Like I will put it next to the loom. Okay, it's about what I need. And then I'll cut it a little bit longer mm -hmm. and then I'll run it through. And then toward the end while I still have some hanging out, like, oh, okay, this is how much I can hang out. But I, I love this trick. It's very handy. Cause doing that by hand can be a bit yeah, tedious, yeah. especially for a really lengthy harness. But this won't work on all loom. Only the specific type. Right, oh gosh, yeah. The mesh loom, which I absolutely love, it just looks so pretty and it's nice. Chinese finger trap. But it, that, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, feeding that one, oh my god. Yep. Are you allowed to do that yep. on camera? <laughs> <laughs> Next clip. Uh, okay, oh here yeah. we go. Okay. Oh yeah. There we go, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Oh yeah! Legit. The paint separates over time, yeah. right? So, uh, you know, the little layers of the different chemicals that make up paint, if it just sits for a long time, you get a good shake on it, then you don't get those like splatters as much. I feel like it's, yeah, definitely um, a recommended part of the procedure. This is definitely a process to do this. Like if we're being honest, this is a lot to get this paint to mix, you know, like yeah, it's it's gonna be really mixed, and but you're gonna have to redo this. But this is definitely a process. But it definitely beats doing this. Every yeah, <laughs> yeah. After every. Minute. <laughs> I'm gonna get that. You know? <laughs> if you don't do a lot of painting in your shop, um, then I don't know if this is necessary. You could probably just uh, handshake as 
Heber showed us yeah, yeah. earlier. Yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> exactly. Like that, it works the best. It works the best. <laughs> Next clip. Oh, I know oh, what's gonna happen. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. You can only do that if it's like a Volkswagen. <laughs> this guy's gotten a screwdriver launched at him a couple times. Uh, yeah, I'm not, you know, <laughs> like I've seen this times before. There's uh, plenty of videos where people are doing this and uh, then we get it. It's cool, it's a little flex. I've never you know, worked on a Volkswagen like this. I don't know what the process is to um, loosen the belt. I, I imagine I, it's that Yeah, hard. I mean, I, it, looks like, <laughs> it looks like there's one main pulley which doesn't move and there looks like there's another pulley which more than likely moves. There's probably like a bolt or something that you just gotta loosen and another one with it and allows that to shift up and down, right? Yeah. That's normally the process on this. So like just for safety purposes, I wouldn't really do this. This seems very dangerous because if you know you screw up once, that screwdriver is gonna launch right at you. I hope you're wearing your safety glasses. Uh, yeah, you better be wearing safety glasses for that. <laughs> yeah. Let's be real, bro. You're not in Le Mans 24 hours and you're not racing this one. Right, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's a Volkswagen, it's a Volkswagen. It's a Volkswagen. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, and that's the other thing too. You could not do this on any other car. This has two pulleys, right? Uh, like, if it has more than one, one pulley, pulley, you're not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Next clip, please. Ew. Okay. What are okay. we, are these, okay, I see what's going on there, okay. Smack a nice round edge on it. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. You gotta strip out the bolt more to get it out. There we go, yeah. Yeah! Sometimes you gotta make stuff fit on a stuff that does not fit, okay? To make it fit. To make it, to make it fit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you make it fit, and then you can get off. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. <laughs> Every time you strip out a bolt, it requires, I feel like, new tools in the proverbial toolbox oh, of yeah. like, okay, how am I gonna get this out? And this is one of those tools for sure. I, I'm not gonna use my snap-on sockets for this one. I think I'm probably gonna grab my Icon socket out just in case I uh, uh, damage it. Uh, this would be a sacrificial socket for me, but I've definitely done this plenty of times. Harbor Freight boys, look out. You already know we're doing this every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every day. Every day. If he doesn't have a socket that fits or if like the actual socket that normally works is stripping, uh, you find something that you can either like size down or something that will like, you can actually get on there to sit. Cause like, let's say this is a, a six point and like it's like the size up you could probably get a standard 12 point or like a standard six point that's like real tight fit and just wail it on there till it sits and then just get it off. Right. Cause you're gonna be replacing that anyway. You're not gonna reuse a strip bolt. And if you yeah. do, you are absolutely insane. But, uh, yeah. Or you hate the next or, guy. Yeah, right. You're just yeah, like, just I'm not doing say. this next time. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Give me that next clip. Oh yeah, I see this, and I'll put it in a drill. That's it, I think it's what he's gonna do. Yeah. I hope that scrub was clean. <laughs> I heard this works pretty well for like pet hair. Really? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you clean it all off. I it clean looks it good. all off, yeah. I mean, you just buy your Dawn whatever brush at, at the yeah. store, cut it off like he did, I like it. If you have a drill and it's not like one of like the impact drills that you know are like a specific shape. Right. And you know, you're trying to get this done on a weekend, you're not gonna order that brush. You're gonna be like, I'm just gonna go buy something that fits in here and do it. And this perfectly works fine. Like it's, yeah. it fits in there, he can tighten it snug and he's clearing everything off. He can't really fake that, he's showing it. It's, yeah. it's working. Proof's in you the pudding. Yeah. If you do this like a bunch, I wonder if it'll eventually like fuzz up the carpet, like if the bristles are too, I don't know, okay. I don't know. That leads to the question, do they sell soft bristle toilet brushes? Let me know in the comments. Ooh, I yeah. I wanna know, <laughs> who got those soft bristle toilet brushes, you know? My toilet be a little sensitive at times, I need those soft <laughs> bristle toilet <laughs> Next whip. Ooh. We got a zip tie going uh -huh. around the frayed cable. Oh, he's spinning it. Oh. Very nice. Very nice. Wow. Ah. 
<laughs> Very satisfying. Where'd they hire this guy? Now, I son? know. I know it's not, he's out here living in 2035. Shh, dude, no, wait, that. Uh, 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 uh. Ooh, very nice. Very, very nice. Dude, that almost looked reversed, but that's crazy. That's sweet. I want to try that. Yeah, I, I really gotta try that I out. I want to try that. I've seen where like they'll try to cut it off, where they'll put they'll cut off the frayed end, they'll put the other end in a drill to kind of tighten it, yeah, kind of yeah, like you yeah. did with the zip tie, and then they'll use like some sort of torch to cut it, so it actually kind of like singes the end, so uh, they can put the tip on. But this is much faster. Yeah, probably. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if A lot this, less tools doesn't require a torch. If this really works, you know, this is like. Pretty smart. This is, in the future. this is like spinning everything around, lining it up, ready to go. You don't gotta have any special tools for it. All you need is zip ties. If you don't have zip ties on hand, you aren't really breaking stuff, so you kind of really need 100%. to get them because you're probably gonna break something soon. Yeah. Recommendation: go buy some. The next clip. You guys, so many of you have been hyping up this mechanic hack where you essentially get your vice grips and a wrench and you'll mm -hmm. take the box and we'll tie at the very end mm -hmm. and you'll tie it out. Yeah. 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 So you guys are geeking over. Which I'm not gonna lie, is a good trick. But what I do is I'll get a vice grips again and I'll get a bigger wrench. And what I'll do is I'll hook it on. And as you can see, it's really tight. Instead of wrestling out with your hand, what you'll do is get your bigger wrench. So I'll hook it yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah. And you'll apply pressure like Kinda that. Kind of like double wrenching. There you go. Now it's not going anywhere. It's really tight. And if you want to unlock it, do the opposite. You'll have just, to get it. Yeah, you'll have to use the to oh, get yeah, it back yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's definitely legit. I mean, you could probably use other things. You really want to get it on there tight? Use a jack oh, handle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Why stop there? Yeah, you definitely, <laughs> with vice grips, sometimes you got to get them on really tight. Like, you'll think you'll get it on tight with your grip, and then you'll spin it, and it'll spin freely. So you have to, like, yeah. really jack down on it. It's better, number one, to not strip anything, or if, if you're using it for that, but Let's say you gotta hold something down really hard, then yeah, this looks like a great move to do. Yeah, because uh, especially if you don't get it tight enough, you end up doing more damage, oh, and then you yeah. go back and forth, back, and you just keep doing it like worse and worse damage. Better to mar one surface area than to just keep marring, trying to exactly. Work, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. I got these tiny little hands, you know, and they're strong, but they're tiny. So my, this is something perfect for me. My hands are medium. <laughs> <laughs> Let's roll on over to that next clip. Okay, okay. Interesting. Is that sand? It's water, right? Uh, he's, it's that... water, but he's holding sand in his hand, so it's oh, blasting the sand. Okay, all right. I can't tell if, like, is this, I mean, the sand must be doing so. Oh, that looks very oh, nice. That looks very nice, yeah, but he did jump cut, so. Right, exactly. The only thing is, is like, his hands either must be, like, super callous, or, like, if there's any kind of real pressure coming out of that pressure washer, I don't know if I want to be, it just, maybe it's just a nozzle, like, it's one yeah. of those tiny pressure washers, so it's not that crazy. So maybe we're, like, supersizing that action by adding some sand in there. I would just be worried about sand maybe getting in places where it shouldn't, oh, uh, especially yeah. around an engine. Small crevices. Small, Small crevices. crevices, yeah. <laughs> Basically, don't have your spark plug hole open. Right, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing. Uh, That'd be bad, yeah. Yeah. You know what? If it works, if it works, it works. This yeah. is one way to uh, skin a cat, I guess. <laughs> He's that guy I was like, you got soft hands. Bro. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maybe it's touching the sand oh, more than it is like his hand. Yeah. Just the tip? Maybe. Just the tip. Just the tip. That's how they get you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blast on over to that next clip. Ooh. Oh! Hey. Work smarter, not harder. Hopefully he's using that stuff that uh, combats the rust paint-wise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that exists. If he's just painting it black. Just hiding it, so <laughs> storing all the moisture inside. You know what you should do? You should definitely just grab mm, a sander and just put his hand right on <laughs> <laughs> That's straight up regular paint. You can see it says two it is, times. It That's is. like yeah, yeah, yeah. Primarex paint yeah. or like some gloss. We put a brand new drive shaft in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the reason why it's not a great idea to paint over rust is because you're not really getting rid of the rust. You're getting rid of the visibility of it, but it's already in there. They usually call rust like a cancer of metal because it's a bacteria that's just eating away at it, right? So if you're just covering it with paint, it's staying there. It's still gonna keep thriving, and now you're only giving it a sealed 
area for it to just keep eating that yeah. paint, you know? Yeah. You're not really getting rid of it. It's gonna just keep eating and eating and eating until it becomes a problem. Right, right. Yeah, sure, it's pretty. You know, that paint looks nice. Uh, and yeah, maybe this guy doesn't care. He's just making it look pretty for something else. But uh, if you're selling a car and this happens, you're doing this. It's kind of that's shady. Yeah, yeah. That's messed up. Super shady. Go ahead and click somewhere if you want to see more videos of real mechanics reacting to TikTok hacks. Ooh, I want to see that. Me too. Yeah. Thank you again, Heber, for stepping away from all your duties in the shop and uh, working on high low and all that fun stuff to come uh, hang out with us. Wait, I was working on stuff. <laughs> I gotta go back. Oh my god. Thank you for coming out. Yeah, we appreciate it. Me. This is great. Lots of fun. I like the cars. Room, room. All right, see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Have a beautiful time.